yeah the biology of longevity and aging with relationship to the uh, metabolic disorders so that's what i'll be doing i mean uh, speaking in the next uh, 20 minutes or so what i will do is i'll i'll uh, first define i mean i'll i'll go through these uh, the broad areas uh, like defining uh, aging uh, what are the various theories about aging what is chronological versus biological age and then uh, speak about the different types of aging and assessment of aging and then uh, finally uh, end with the therapeutic strategies that can be used to retard aging so aging as we know is a normal phenomena or a developmental event uh, which begins with conception right at the time a child is uh, born um, uh, aging starts and continues th throughout life until we die so it's aging is progressive and inevitable in fact, uh, some uh, Golda Meir said that, uh, you know, old age is like, a, uh, like flying in a plane through the storm. Once you're aboard, you, there's nothing you can do about it. So you just go on and you age gracefully. That's what uh, we want. We, we are, uh, um, I mean, discussing about. So, uh, so if you look at uh, aging, and it's not always the same. There are people who age with a lot of frailty and there are, uh, there are others who age uh, without much of frailty and and that is what we are trying to discuss today as to what are the various various theories related to aging what happens with age uh, we, we, what we see is that uh, there are all the systems of the body are affected because of aging that is uh, name it the, whether you look at the respiratory system cardiovascular renal or, or and and in each of these systems we say that there's a 5 to 10 percent change every decade after the age of 30 you could see this uh, change which is happening and these changes are listed here you could see that there is um, you know when you look at the respiratory system there's lots of loss of strength and coordination the respiratory muscles the cough reflexes gag reflex are reduced cardiovascular system there's change in the heart rate rhythm and efficiency loss of elasticity and hardening of the arteries so this is a very significant uh, effect which has a, a lot of implications like leading to hypertension and uh, uh, and similarly in the neurological tissue you have uh, uh, shrinkage of the of the, of the uh, neurons and uh, and 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 uh, similarly you know even if you look at the endocrine system you find that there is a lower production of uh, estrogens particularly in women you see that uh, there's a, a sharp decline in the estrogen production after menopause in men also there's a decline in testosterone production which happens very gradually there's decline decline in insulin sensitivity and increase in insulin resistance so similarly there are uh, there, there are changes which happen in every system and uh, what we see is that uh, all this leads to increase significant impre increase in the risk of mortality biochemical composition of tissue changes the physiological capacity decreases ability to maintain homeostasis diminishes and the susceptibility and vulnerability to to diseases increases but all these are um, are are uh, are influenced by uh, by environmental and genetic influences which which alter the rates of aging so there are different theories which are proposed psychological theories the environmental theories developmental theories and biological theories which uh, decide how how soon you age how fast how rapidly you age is all decided by by several different theories have been proposed to to explain this uh, differential rates of aging the psychological theory says that the more you are satisfied more you are uh, involved in cycle i mean uh, physical and social event activities uh, you are more likely to age very gradually uh, whereas somebody who is isolated uh, tends to have uh, or socially deprived uh, tends to have uh, a very rapid aging similarly there are environmental theories speaking about the role of uh, uh, sun exposure exposure to radiation exposure to various uh, other uh, environmental factors which could have an impact on the aging then the developmental theory speaks about the different uh, different uh, stages in the life cycle, uh, life cycle of the individual, which have uh, different conflicts, which will which will decide on the on the on the uh, on the rapidity of aging. Then you have the biological theories, which are basically discussing about. I mean, over the years, these have changed. Over, uh, I mean, uh, different uh, theories have been proposed: the variant theory, the accumulation of mutations, the pleiotropic theories, and uh, and and then the free radical hypothesis. All these have been proposed but basically broad, broad, broadly the biological theories you can divide into two categories you could say that they are the program theories and and those with with the damage or error theories so there are two sets of theories you could say each one of them have have different uh, uh, different uh, different uh, postulations that are there in the program longevity theory what we are saying is that we are speaking of aging as a, a sequential switching on and off of certain genes with senescence being defined as a time when age associated deficits are manifested so there there are different uh, 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 processes which are 
predestined and uh, and th these could be manifested in the form of uh, telomere shortening in the at the chromosomal level or different manifestations which we i will be speaking further in the next few slides then you have the endocrine theories which spoke, speak about uh, the biological clock which decides the uh, the the secretion of hormones and and this ultimately decides the the pace of aging and as we said that uh, the, there's a decline in the sex hormones a decline in the insulin secretion, decline in growth hormone secretion. So all these are are and, and increase in cortisol production. So all these are are uh, factors which decide which de uh, which lead to sarcopenia and which also uh, influence the rate of aging. Then you have the programmed aging theories. Uh, you have the immunological. Uh, uh, in, in the same uh, programmed aging theories, we have also have the immune programming, which uh, which declines over time and which also again leads to vulnerability to infectious diseases and ultimately leads to aging. The other set of theories are the damage or error theories, which speak of uh, you know uh, the wear and tear of various tissues that that uh, that uh, decides the the rate of aging. And uh, there are other aspects that here that like the cross-linking theory, which was proposed by uh, proposed 1942, which spoke about the cross-linking proteins, damaged cells and tissues, which which slow down the body processes and result in aging. So this could be uh, one of the mechanisms that that are contributing to aging. Apart from that, the the accumulation of free radicals and the free radical injury. Uh, is also another uh, factor the the dna damage which happens with uh, various uh, with various uh, factors also leads to increase in the increase in the ra rates of aging now what we have to understand is basically that there are two uh, broad areas we have the uh, chronological age versus the biological age while while uh, you know the chronological age is decided by the number of i mean decides the number of candles that you have on your um, on your birthday cake but uh, the biological age is decided by various other factors. So if you look at the relationship between chron chronological age versus the biological age, you can see here that uh, uh, that those individuals with, uh, with uh, cardiovascular disease, those with uh, uh, metabolic disorders like type 2 diabetes, chronic kidney disease, autoimmune diseases, they tend to have a, a more rapid aging as you can see here. And you could see even more premature vascular aging in people who have uh, genetic disorders, familial dyslipidemias, progerias and inherited inherited arterial calcification syndromes. All these uh, conditions, you see that there is a, a, a much uh, faster aging in this uh, scenario. While you could have other uh, scenarios where you have delayed vascular aging, and and uh, and that is what we are looking at, and uh, those are uh, the centenarians and super centenarians who who tend to have a more gradual aging, and they have a delayed aging. So, if you broadly look at the factors which uh, influence aging, you could say that uh, you have uh, factors like. Uh, you know, um, like the presence of various metabolic disorders, which you spoke of just now, then then sleep deprivation is another factor, another important factor, which can lead to a, a senescent uh, sen accumulation of senescent and phenotypes uh, and associated secretory phenotypic cells. And then you have uh, then you have uh, uh, other situations like uh, uh, gut dysbiosis also can influence the uh, biological aging. So there are different factors which are which are playing an important role. Thymic involution is another uh, factor, and ultimately, what we see is that there is impaired immune responses, low-grade inflammation uh, present in in patients who start, I mean, in individuals who start aging early. So, if you look at it at another perspective of aging, you could say that uh, uh, that aging is nothing but garbage which one which one collects as uh, when they are young, and that that manifests as old age. And and staying healthy isn't just how old you get it's about how you get old so that's that's what we are looking at so if you look at individuals we have seen that aging is not uh, the, the biological aging may not be parallel to the chronological aging so there are different phenotypes distinct distinct agiotypes you can say you can call them as different agiotypes and how the body changes over time there are individuals with different agiotypes they are the metabolic agers the immune agers and the nephrotic agers and the hepatic agers. So there are different uh, sets of individuals. A classic immune ager may be chronologically 40 years old with the immune system of 42 year old and a metabolism that is biologically 30. This person would re likely remain more slender in old age, but would also be increasingly prone to immunocompromised and related conditions over the course of their life. Versus a metabolic ager, on the other hand, might retain a healthy immune system while increasingly struggling with diabetic risk factors and weight as he grows older.
So uh, this is how we can have different HO types. This is, these are based on combination of genetic and uh, environmental factors. Behavior, behavior can accelerate aging as can, so, uh, so it can also help to slow down the aging also. And uh, what we require is a personal, personalized and proactive approach to health. A better measure of health and aging would be, it would be the biological age rather than looking at the chronological age. Now, how do we measure this biological age? There are different uh, different biomarkers which are being used to measure the biological age. The, they could be uh, they could be uh, molecular and cellular markers like the telomere length, the DNA, um, the somatic mutations, the inflammatory markers, the IGF one levels. All these could be uh, could be one set of molecular and cellular markers. We have the functional and structural markers like the arterial stiffness, blood pressure endothelial dysfunction, intimal thickness, um, then the atherosclerosis, all these uh, could decide. The calcification of the arteries also is very important in terms of deciding the vascular aging. So there are different factors which are playing a role here in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, in deciding the or serving as markers of aging. So you have uh, different biological markers, uh, markers in the cardiovascular system, markers in the metabolic process, markers of organ dysfunction, markers of CNS aging. So you have different different uh, markers present. And uh, to just to show a few of these markers, you could say that, you know, the blood glucose levels, the HbA1c level, the body mass index, all these are, are indicators of, of aging. As you can see, uh, all these uh, decide on the risk for, for accelerated vascular aging and the, de uh, the development of cardiovascular disease in individuals with, uh, with metabolic disorders. And then you have the, the hormonal factors, you have the reactive oxygen species, you have the superoxide dismutase levels. All these are, are the ones which, which uh, play a role in, in uh, deciding the, the, the arterial aging. Now, you have uh, other uh, factors like uh, the um, histone modification or epigenetic factors like uh, histone, histone modification, the loss of histones, and also the accumulation of certain non-coding mRNAs, which are at the, at the cellular level showing the, the, the our markers of aging. Having looked at all this, our the, the major question that comes to our mind is, can we retard aging? This is the major million dollar question that is in everybody's mind. So I think uh, what we have understood is that aging is, is highly individualized, depends on various biological factors. And it, this has been shown even in the recent multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis has shown that uh, vascular aging progresses, does not progress equally in the same, uh, in all individuals, it progresses differentially in different individuals. And therefore, there is a potential for different agents to retard aging. And if you look at the therapeutic options that we have today, we have three major therapeutic options that we have, hypocaloric diets being one of them, excise being another one, and the drugs. So let me just quickly discuss about each of these factors. If you look at this, uh, this cartoon, you can see that there are, uh, there, are uh, th there is uh, a depiction of how uh, a hypocaloric diet can have a significant impact on, on influencing the, the primary aging factors. Uh, it can uh, re uh, lead to reduction in, uh, reduction in the oxygen consumption, leads to uh, reduce the DNA damage, redu reduction in oxidative stress, and ultimately leads to, uh, a uh, leads to reduction in the factors that, uh, uh, that uh, pr promote aging and also, also alters the secondary factors which promote aging. And ultimately, all this leads to, uh, leads to a, a slower a slowing of aging. The calorie restriction diet, as you can see, uh, has been shown in various studies to have anti-aging effects. And uh, they, they, the calorie restriction is most reasonable anti-aging intervention uh, is uh, shown in this meta-analysis of several different studies. And they have all shown that calorie restriction has a significant impact. And uh, this produces a consistent result and has been shown to reduce aging in various, uh, various trials. And what is important is to strike a balance, restrict the calories, but don't cause undernutrition. The calorie restriction to the, is to, to, be to, to the tune of about 200 to 750 calories uh, restriction every day. So as to target a weight loss of about 10% in, in six months, and then the weight loss, then, then what is required is weight maintenance. And uh, one important thing is here, we are looking at protein supplementation of 1 to 1.2 grams per kg per day of protein supplementation. Uh, with uh, and, and along with that, we are also looking at good vitamin D and uh, uh, vitamin D and calcium supplementation so as to maintain the muscle strength and muscle function. 
this is what we have also uh, spoken in our uh, review uh, recently which we published in the diabetes metabolic syndrome and obesity targets and therapy where we spoke about the protein uh, uh, content being about 1 to 1.2 grams per day then uh, the the other uh, other important aspect that we are looking at is are there any mimetics to this calorie restriction any drugs which can mimic calorie restriction so to that end we have uh, metformin we have uh, sglt2 inhibitors which serve as calorie mimetic agents calorie restriction mimetic agents and we also have the glp1 rs which are all all these three different classes of agents work uh, as a um, calorie restriction mimetics they produce the same effects as calorie restriction and probably they are 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 are, uh, are drugs which we are all looking forward looking ahead to providing us a a, a, a a protection from aging then let us look at the role of exercise if you look at the role of exercise exercise has different uh, influences one is through the mitochondrial biogenesis improving the mitochondrial biogenesis having influence on the and the cerebral angiogenesis and uh, also having effects on the various inflammatory pathways and and through all these mechanisms what happens is that exercise provides uh, several different benefits which reduce oxidative stress reduces inflammation and reduce uh, improves endothelial function and leads to decrease in the markers of aging and if you look at the types of exercise that can produce this effect you have the an acute anaerobic exercise which can produce a small effect but a chronic aerobic exercise is the one which provides a major positive effect for for i mean which is a long lasting effect and and has a significant effect on anti aging and if you look look at various studies we have got different studies uh, which have looked at that we have which has shown uh, the beneficial effects of exercise in various organ systems and if you look at the grade degradation of hierarchy of exercise it produces the benefit you have a you have the uh, flexibility enhancement for the balance training so the the picture here shows how the uh, the, the exercises can be used for improving the uh, uh, for its anti uh, anti anti aging effect then the exercise mimetics again metformin and sglt2 inhibitors provide exercise mimetic effects also because they produce some of the effects of exercise the uh, which are benefits which are produced by exercise but through through activation of the amp kinase activity and uh, through their through uh, through other pathways the cert1 pathway and the ppar gamma pathways so the drugs Uh, then then coming to finally coming to the drugs there's been lot of a uh, lot of talk about the uh, lot lot of talk about use hrt as an anti aging therapy and and um, ocps as anti aging in the 1930s and 1960s but there, there we have moved a long way from there and uh, we also know about the role of testosterone in in late onset hypoglycemia uh, hypogonadism in terms of in terms of providing the benefit now looking at metformin quickly metformin has uh, many of its effects through activation of the amp kinase pathway and through the mtor activation it leads to uh, it leads to the improvement in uh, it has anti aging effects and and there are studies which have shown in animal models the, to improve the life span while in in uh, in human studies it has been shown to have a beneficial effects on reducing the risk of cancer and and providing uh, uh, providing providing um, uh, a, a, a longevity also but however the studies have shown that the, the these effects not similarly seen in all subjects and therefore there is a role for uh, personalized metformin therapy identifying those individuals who are likely to benefit from metformin and using this therapy in those agent in those individuals resveratrol is another agent which has been uh, found to have these uh, beneficial effects uh, working through uh, the cert1 pathway modulation of the interleukin pathways and al also modulating the mitochondrial uh, biogenesis and uh, it, through all these mechanisms what it does is that it has uh, benefits on the cardiovascular system it has uh, influence on the infertility uh, influence on sarcopenia influence on the osteoporosis and various cancers there are several novel therapies which are also being studied um uh, novel uh, drugs like uh, the uh, sr sarms that is the um, uh, uh, androgen receptor modulators the anti obesity medications and then uh, mesenchymal stem cells all these are the ones which are which are which are being studied for uh, their effects on aging so in summary uh, what i would say is that uh, there are several factors which influence aging right from uh, right from uh, various biological factors environmental influences which have an in 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 effect effect on aging and uh, if you are trying to 
modulate aging and reduce uh, have an anti-aging effect then we're looking at uh, dietary modifications calorie restriction drugs some of the drugs like metformin and uh, some of the other newer drugs which are being studied exercise is a proven therapy which can have an anti-aging effect and finally um, uh, and uh, so i think these are the ones which we have and finally i would say that uh, from a on a on a on a different perspective i would say i would like to end by saying that uh, anyone who stops learning is is uh, the one who is going to grow old whether at 20 or 80 who so anybody who keeps learning is the one who stays young uh, stays young and the greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young and that's what you can do by continuing to learn and that's what we are doing today being in this meeting uh, important meeting here and we are thanks thanks for all of you for uh, being very attentive and uh, i'll be happy to take any questions